All right, mic check. Will all mics please stand up? <laughs> Very funny. You just wanted to make that dad joke. <laughs> yes. All right, so a lot of you guys asked for a book 14 video. Most of you were requesting a what's its face, like an analysis video. And um, I was considering putting one of those together, but then at like 1 a.m. in the morning, which is the best time to have ideas, by the way. Totally not a bad time to have ideas. I thought that it would be kind of cool to have a guest and do a little talk about book 14. So I have with me here today a friend. Her name is Deputy. Yep. And she is here to help me talk about book 14 and hopefully to be a better speaker than me because I suck. Um, well, that's too bad because, like, <laughs> so I know that there's no one here except you and me, but at the same time we're recording, it's going out to a bunch of people, so I'm still getting stage fright with Well, it's like stage fright, stage. but a version of stage fright that just has you thinking, yeah. man, I look like an idiot in front of my friend here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> talking <laughs> to an invisible weird, crowd. I don't mind looking like an idiot in right? front of you normally. So. Right? Like, it, it doesn't bother the other person, but it bothers the person who's talking. Anyways, yep. before we get too off topic, before we, we're not even no starting, <laughs> I didn't even explain what we're doing really. So, we're going to talk about book 14 we're going to talk about what we liked what we might change uh we you know stuff we noticed maybe throw some predictions in at the end uh we'll figure it out depending how long this recording goes uh so that might that might be long um before she introduces herself i do want to say that this is obviously going to have spoilers because you know book 14 um i think it's been out for a couple months so i'm sure plenty of you have read it but in case you haven't this is going to have lots of spoilers i'm not going to do a spoiler free section because that would just be too much effort, and I refuse to put effort into it. Um. <laughs> You've been warned. <laughs> so, if you don't want spoilers, this is where you need to turn the video off and go buy the book. <laughs> so, without further ado, um, Deckity is going to introduce herself, and then we'll get started. Um, so, hi, I'm Deckity. Um, I'm also her friend Vanessa. Some of you may remember me from her 20 questions, or you might be coming directly from my YouTube or Scratch page. If so, I am another animator who attempts to draw cats on the internet, and I like doing videos and stuff. So, um, I'm currently on a break for most of June, there won't be anything coming out, but in July I'm hopefully going to start doing more videos, and I might do some animation collaborations with my friend here, who I am attempting to teach to animate, but she is lazy. Lazy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which of us is on break right now? <laughs> I'm you cut out an animation, and you're being a big because you did it. Did I? When did I cut out animation? You I cut out know. the hands because you didn't want to. Oh, I did. <laughs> oh. Okay, the story behind that. So, yeah. if you remember from my "Everybody Loves Me" whip, Deathbringer had his hand animated during one of the clips. Except that, okay, so I was doing the line art, and then I forgot to line art that, and then I deleted the sketch layer. So, well, so I, I was like, well. Okay, she's really good at it, so I can forgive her. <laughs> and then I did the animation meme that, like, didn't have any animation in it, because yep. I'm oh, a wimp. <laughs> I'll figure it out eventually. I've got a good teacher. So, yeah. anyways. She's good at it, and you can definitely <laughs> subscribe to her if you're not already. So, if you're not, like, either you're new, or you just like her videos, but don't like being friendly or whatever. Anyways, so. yeah, go subscribe to her, too, because she's a great animator. and she Know her! Know her. <laughs> yeah! Why is it like this every time? <laughs> Subscribe awesome. to both of us, and then you get all the content. Yeah! <laughs> so, do you want to go first on, like, I guess, overall perception of Book 14? Sure, I'll ask the questions. All right. <laughs> it's like an interrogation <laughs> now, huh? I wasn't prepared. Do I get a phone call? <laughs> Can I call my mom? <laughs> so, what, was, what did, was the book overall like? Um, It was overall a pretty good book. Um, yep. It was intense. But it, it didn't, you know, it wasn't, like, too fast-paced, or, like, it didn't seem to drag on. It kept me interested. I mean, I read it in, like, two days, so there's that. Yeah, I will admit, I was very surprised when I heard Snowfall was going to be the main point of view. Me because, too. you know, she was kind of seemed like just a whiny, like, Like oh, a brat. A, a mean no, person. No, not, like, not a brat, but, like, uh, well, just like an extremely paranoid teenager. <laughs> well, like, when they introduced her in Winter's book, book, which was, like, what? Yeah. That was she, book seven, right? Yeah. yeah. When they introduced her in Winter Turning, she, she seemed like the mean kid. Yeah, like, like the, the kid mean, that the I would not want to talk to, right? So it was a bold choice for Tui to take her and make her the main character. Yeah. But I think it was interesting because, you know, what they always say is that, like, every bully is just, like, anxious on the inside. And Tui took that and, like, <laughs> ran full distance with it. She was like, anxious, you say? I can do anxious, all right? Yeah, so it was, it was really interesting to see how she turned out. It was also interesting how even though there wasn't any animuses anymore in the book, they still played into animus magic. Yeah. 
And they still kept it, like up with everything going on on the continent, even though all the dragons here. Which have is a no lot idea to that was a lot of threads to tie up too. And Tui did a good job like keeping it all coherent, because that's a lot to keep up with. And one thing I really liked was with the Ring of Visions, um, which you know was giving her insight into you know the other dragons. It was a very clever way. It was a plot device, whether or not it was an intentional plot device. But Tui was able to use it to kind of give the readers an update on the, the you know Pentala while, you know, we're on Pyria with the rest of the dragons, because I don't think she's had a book yet where the cast has been split so far in half, you know? And there's, like, there's so much high-stakes content on the other side, so it was a really interesting decision to be able to keep up with both sides of it and still have one single point-of-view character. I'm starting to think we should have probably given a brief, a very brief summary of what was going on in the book, just as a recap. So, I mean, if you're listening to this, you've probably already read the book, but for those of you who might not have... Basically, um, all the dragons from Pantola have gone over to Pyria, and Snowfall is panicking because they're all landing on her beach. So she takes them over to the other queens to decide what to do with. Um, a bunch of our stuff happens, which we'll talk about in just a second. <laughs> and then she goes back to her kingdom, while suddenly reforms. Right. And that seems like a good place to go into. What did you like about the book? Um, yeah, so I think I really liked the POV, because... It was very different from all the other point of view characters. Really it was so different because, like, we've never had a character that's been this anxious the whole time. I mean, like, even Turtle had limits right? on his anxiety. And she was in her head the whole time. And I think it was just a really interesting perspective on all the events because she spent the whole time thinking of the what ifs, which which is a, a very interesting way to explore every possible aspect of where Tui could have taken the story, even though she didn't. And I think it just really hammers, like. Uh, how hard it is to be a queen at such a young age. Yep. And they addressed it at the end of the book with Opal coming back and, you know, saying that the whole shtick with the Ring of Visions was that, you know, yeah. she had to, it was helping her because she became queen too early. Yes. Lynx. I love Lynx. You have Lynx to love is, Lynx. Oh, you gotta love her. She's so I mean, cool. I loved her the minute she appeared me in book too. seven. Not, totally not just because of her name at first. And I then know, I'd She say. grew on me. <laughs> but, you know, like, she Frankly, was awesome. She, had, she was, like, super friendly and She's the overly optimistic, friendly kind of person I want to be in real yeah. life, honestly. Frankly, I was on it the minute they said she had freckles. Yep. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Why? Because <laughs> freckles are cool. I like, you know, Keely yeah. has freckles. I gave Sunny freckles. I gave Whiteout freckles. <laughs> giving everyone freckles. <laughs> yeah. Even the sea wings. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Um, I liked uh, the variety. Oh, I loved how they had all the other, ma- like, you know, Winter and Moon and Keebly and Sundu. They had all these other POV characters there in the background. And you had Snowfall's perspective on their actions. And yep. she was like, oh, they're acting like this, therefore they're being suspicious. Yep. And then, like, we as the reader can remember, no, they're just, you know, doing this or that. And it was funny to see them in the background yeah. just doing their thing. It, I don't know, it just seemed poetic for some reason to me. <laughs> I like the relationship between Snowfall and Mink. That mm, was adorable. That was cute, yes. Like, honestly, I saw a video about it before I read the book, and for a few minutes I thought, or like for a while, I thought Mink was Snowfall's daughter for some reason. <laughs> and then I remembered she's a she teenager got busy. and not married. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time skip. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, honestly, like, you don't see a lot of, like, other than, like, the brief glances with, like, Clay and his siblings, you don't get a lot of family relation, like, good family relationships in the Yeah, book. like, I mean, biological. Sunny and Thorn, and then, of course, there was Clay. I mean, they and, have all this found family all, stuff, but have, as far like, as biological yes. family goes, it's oh, yeah, bad luck. Yep, yeah, it's just, like, death and destruction and mm-hmm. hatred all over the place. So it's fine. It's nice to finally have, like, a biological family that has some good points. And, like, yeah. Snowfall was afraid of her sister at first, but I also like how she left her sister, like, she sort of came back to terms with her sister and let her live her life. Yeah, speaking of Crystal, I think that was a really good resolution to her little side plot. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like it was just another way to kind of progress Snowfall's character arc in learning that maybe, just maybe, other tribes aren't so bad. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> Even if, didn't she call whatever his name is, like a big dumb mudwing or something? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what she was, was a little it? slow to come around. It was, it had like a G and an H and I can't pronounce it, so I'm not going to say it. I think I'll it was like Geyer or something? It was like Gallerhin or something. It was like, it was like, it had an L and I, Okay, I think I know, I know what the creature is. It's a type of crocodile. Oh, really? But, yeah. Even more than I do. 
So, well, I mean, I could be wrong in this alligator, but I know what it is. And we're both gonna feel really stupid if we're, like, both completely wrong about his name and there wasn't a I mean, I read it, like, an hour ago, so I'm fairly certain I'm not totally wrong. Yeah, you finished the book an hour ago. You're so fresh Yeah, so, um, she was gonna come help me record this today, and so I speed ran the rest of the last 200 pages of the book in, like, three hours. So, like, an hour before she came, I was in bed crying. (laughs) Jerboa? I love Jerboa. Jerboa. Not, not the first one, Boa. You Boa's whole storyline was so I know. sad, and it yeah. makes me. I was gonna draw Snowfall for this video, and I don't know. I, I, I might still, but as soon as I finish the book, I like sat down and drew Boa. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if I'll draw Snowfall for the video. Maybe I'll put them both in. I'm not sure, but. Oh I mean, man! Depending on how long this goes, you might have time. To <laughs> I just but the, the. It was also kind of like one thing I found interesting was how she was able to explain the like. The like we knew we briefly knew about Jerboa in Darkstalker's book because his father had mentioned the animus Sandwing who was a runaway. Right. And then talk about they foreshadowing. Didn't, they didn't really do anything with her besides that. And then we didn't know. And then all we knew is that there was a second Jerboa or actually yeah. a third. But um, <laughs> we didn't really know much else about her besides that. So it was interesting to see how Toy Tai. Ugh, I can never pronounce her name. The you always start to me. Tui. Yeah. Always, like, she <laughs> wrapped that up and explained how there were, how, like, why she had her name, why she was yeah. still basically immortal. And it's like, I feel like there's no way Tui had all that, like, conceptualized back when she wrote Darkstalker. Maybe she no. did. I mean, I sometimes it happens. But, like, if she didn't, man, it sure worked out well. Like, it just, yeah. it all tied together. And just the idea of Boa being rewritten over, like, what was it, 11 centuries? Like, a long time, like, being it, erased was, and remade over and over, and then how badly it messed her head up is so funny. Well, not, like, funny, but, like, strange. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I overuse the word funny for too many things. And then, like, it really also explained why she would want to get rid of animus magic. You could argue that it was sort of for a selfish reason, but she saw yeah. all the worst sides of it. And, and she was right. And, I mean, you know, she, like, also sat through all the destruction and stuff that mm-hmm. Darkstalker did. That's true. Twi- pretty much twice. Right. Or, well, debatably twice. I think she came after because, remember, she, she said she waited after, 60 but years I'm, after Queen but, I would, but, but I'm sure she witnessed the aftermath. I'm, and, you know, Jerboa at first didn't want to give Boa any animus magic, so yeah. I'd be surprised if And she was if saying she how her mom like, told her the horror stories about it. Yeah, I'd be surprised if Jerboa hadn't told Boa all the horrible stories yeah. about Darkstalker and Arctic. Yeah, and um, it was just really interesting that that was how she... So, okay... Speaking about Jerboa, we totally threw our schedule, or, like, our plan out the window here, because we're kind of jumping from topic to topic by process of association, which is fine. But Jerboa, Wasp, and Snowfall ended up being, like, sort of foil characters for me. And and the way that I'm seeing it is Wasp and Snowfall were the really obvious ones. They even mentioned it in the book, um, you know, because Wasp was, like, anxious, just like Snowfall was, right? Which resulted in her going for total control, which was the ring's way of showing snowfall, you know, if if you let your anxiety rule your actions as queen, where, you know, you have a lot of clout as queen, you have a lot of responsibility and a lot of power, but if she had let that anxiety rule her decision, she might have ended up going for total control like Wasp did, whereas in Jerboa's case, she had that same anxiety, a little bit different, but, you know, same concept, and instead of taking full power, she went the opposite direction and got rid of all the power. Which I also think is kind of interesting when you think about it, because there was actually a study done recently that when people are in a situation and they need to fix something, they will more often add to the situation when the solution, the better solution, is usually taking something away Mm. or subtracting. Yeah. Which I found kind of interesting. It was was an interesting choice on her part to, instead of giving herself more power or trying to put herself above it, she just wanted to de-escalate the situation, the whole thing. Which is probably smart. I know, right? Like, I, I feel like it, it not only does it make for a better narrative, which is why Tui did it, you know, from what yeah. I've heard from what she said, but, um... Maybe it'll it's, stop all the animus <laughs> running right. around. <laughs> Anyways, I um, mean, they're fine if you have one or two, but when you have, like, a whole army of animus is running around... Like, it, it's like we started off the book and they mentioned animus is, like, once in book one, right? And then by the time... And then Dark Stalker like, showed up and everyone's like, it's free real estate. <laughs> right? <laughs> I like, too, that they went into Wasp's head, which I feel like is... They've never done it before in Wings of Fire. It's fairly yeah. uncommon in any literature. But um, they went into Wasp's head and kind of showed how the main antagonist, well, yeah, the main antagonist, 
Now, was, second main antagonist. Who is the first one? The plant. Oh, okay, fine. The second main antagonist was so similar to the, you know, this book's main protagonist. I thought it was a very interesting contrast. I just, the ring was so clever overall because it, it made for such a subtle, but also, and at the same time, very in-your-face, like, character arc. Does, like, does that make sense? Because, like, yes. it was literally an animus object that progressed her character arc. But at the same time, it was so subtle, which was yes. really cool. Um, I liked Sky. Sky, oh, you made the right call in making Sky a marshmallow in your mm -hmm, stickers thing. I did. He is a marshmallow. <laughs> He's so I would, cute. Like, but what, it's like you would try to solve them by by showing them pandas and making them surrender. But I mean, have they seen pandas? <laughs> I don't think anyone could be evil he, after seeing he pandas. He kept going for it. I know. I love that they're sending Sky to the the new continent. I feel like he's gonna get there and be like, wait. <laughs> The, if he even me. makes the flight there, I'll be impressed. Because he's like, well, I guess he's per Peril's age. Yeah. But he seems like he's three years old. Because he's just so cute. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Ren's going to be the one holding the group together. Her and yep. Tsunami, they're just... Her and Tsunami are going to be buddies. No, Tsunami, <laughs> Tsunami's going to be the military commander making <laughs> push-ups. Man, I really wanted Tsunami and Sendu to hit it off and be oh, buddies. My... And, like be the the power duo for the rest of the series, but apparently not. They're, yep. they're they've been kind of on edge, which is fair. Yeah. Speaking of Sundu, I liked um how she was background in the book, but also like she seemed fairly important. I like how yeah. Snowfall was perceiving her as they a threat to did, Hazel. They sort even of though, did you know, that to almost all the characters. It was they interesting. Did, they did a good job. Because, like, Snowfall didn't know all... It was kind of interesting seeing both the characters that Snowfall, like, knew and sort of didn't didn't know much about, or characters she didn't know about, at all about, but we've already, like, seen yeah. what they've seen and everything. I like seeing Hazel as a queen and struggling as a queen, because, you know, from what we saw in Book 13, she wasn't really looking forward to taking, nope. you know, the mantle of leading... But you but, have to give her credit for actually doing it. I like know, in right? the like in the book, but she stepped up. She could have made Sundu do it. But in book four, Diamond also didn't want to be queen. But the minute she had the opportunity, she threw the crown away and took off running. First one out of the volcano. Who was Diamond? Was it? It might not have been Diamond. It was like oh, Mind she was Pop. a Nightwing princess. Yeah, I don't she was know. The I did. One I just who stepped down to. Glory. I feel like that might have been her name. I just, I've been meaning to reread the first arc, but honestly, I don't know. I've read it like eight times, huh. and so at this point, it's like. Ugh. <laughs> Speaking of first arc, I did. I thought it was sweet how Thorn was sort of like not bossing Snowfall or Hazel around, but trying to help them. That one scene where Thorn was like, "Everyone who's not me, go away!" <laughs> right. And Kimberly was like, "But," and she was like, "No!" <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard. I mean, like, I know you love Kimberly, so I'm sorry for saying this, but I'm not a Kimberly fan. So honestly, that one line just made me so happy. Where she was just like, "No!" I love whenever he got his intro back, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm Winter's best friend. I'm also Thorn's second in command." And she's like, "What are you? T I'm right here." <laughs> he's so self-appointed. <laughs> he's so. What's the word? Audacious. Um. Audacious. I'm. I'm saying audacity. I'm no. saying it wrong. The word's getting mixed up in my head. I can't even think of a word. Though, He's so loud mouthed. <laughs> got just, a high opinion like of himself. Leaping before you look, or has a high opinion of himself, but not exactly in a haughty, yeah. arrogant way. I like how whenever, like you know, he was being like you know confident, you know, jazzy. <laughs> he was being jazzy the whole time, and then Snowfall like had her weird vision thing, and then he immediately got serious and was like, "Yeah." I think the word to use was gentle, and I just thought, "Oh, it's so cute." <laughs> I, I do have to give him points for like. But, like lighting off the humor when he know like he kno he yeah. doesn't just keep trying to like he knows be when to be crazy. serious he knows when to toughen up and everything yeah. it's kind of funny his his honestly he and winter their whole relationship is just so well done you know with them like winter the whole time being like no i hate you and keep the whole time being like nah he loves me <laughs> he's he's kidding yeah. <laughs> i liked how winter was like all sad and bittersweet about not going back and it was all dramatic and then Snowfall was like I have no memory of this you can go back whenever you want he was like <laughs> okay <laughs> and then he didn't go back <laughs> right. he just wanted to know he could go back yes. oh I so I never really thought much of Glacier throughout the books but that, yeah the ending that made me like she was like I knew she was a good queen I didn't have my doubts about it because like even if she did choose Blaze's side in the war and seemed a little cold during the war no pun intended she like <laughs> she didn't really want, like, even when she was talking to Blaze, she didn't really want to kill the Dragonettes of Destiny unless, like, they were a threat to her kingdom. She just wanted to be yeah. a good ruler to the Ice Wings and was doing what she thought was best for them. Yeah. And she wanted what was best for her daughters. 
Mm-hmm. And she, even, like, before she was queen, she kept Jerbo a secret and never asked her to do anything for her because yeah. she knew the price it would cost. I think it was really interesting that Opal decided to go back, or I guess not her, but the ring, decided to go back and, like, show her that scene just because, um, I feel like, like, the, it was the last piece of Snowfall that, it was the last piece that Snowfall needed in order to really have self-confidence. Because, you she know, she... she her mother had made a mistake or right, something. Right, and she thought that everyone thought that she was going to be a bad queen, and she finally got to the point where she thought, maybe these dragons have faith in me. And she had finally gotten to the point where she was kind of having faith in herself, but after she found out about Crystal's thing with the Mudwing, she thought that, you know, Glacier just picked her as the last possible option because Mink was too young. And then the end scene was, like, finally the point where she got past that last mental block between her and realizing that her mom actually chose her because she thought she'd be the best possible queen for the Ice Wings. Speaking of the end scene, let's talk about destroying stuff. That was an awesome <laughs> way to, like, the crown, not so much. I did, like, I was a little surprised to hear about, but, I, like, I was surprised, but also not surprised to hear about Diamond enchanting the... Leave it to that! <laughs> I mean, she imprisoned... <laughs> Slayer she just keeps I'm, coming back to bite us. I mean, uh, yep. I, but like, so like, it was a little surprising at first, but it made total sense in hindsight. Uh, yeah, which is the it. best kind of plot twist, right? Because like, yeah. like, okay, because before, what there's I mean, no but, way the rivalry kept yeah. up for two thousand years. Yeah, and like, like all I can the, see going like, for a couple centuries, but two thousand years is a long time. And like, poor little Mink when she was talking about hating the Nightwing, like, she was crying when she was too. I know. Like, it was so sad because she was did, what two? She's yeah, a baby. she's like. <laughs> One thing that did strike me odd is, like, even though Tundra, like, put the crown on Mink and everything, she obviously didn't know it was, right. like, possessed, because even she was a little confused and concerned about, like, the sudden hatred of the Nightwing, so I don't like Tundra, but you do have to give her that. Yeah, I guess. I, I like the destroying that, the wall, that was. I love that, because it was, like, in part with Snowfall realizing that she doesn't have to, like, worry about the opinions of other dragons. She can just focus on being a good queen. I feel like it fit in very well for her to stop caring so much about ice wing tradition because a lot of it you know tradition you know it's important but after yeah. you know it's it was thousands of years at least since you know that had been put into motion and a lot of and in that time was, a lot of things change yeah and a lot of that tradition was also probably put around back like when queen diamond was animus or whatever because mm -hmm. they didn't have because once Arctic left, they lost all animus. Yeah. So it was like over 2,000 years since any of these right. gifts had, had really been, been given. Yeah, it has to have been at least that long. And plus, uh, I feel like there were a lot more wars going on back then because it was closer to the scorching, which was whatever class, cas, cas, cl, class, yeah. ca, cataclysmic, <laughs> cataclysmic event <laughs> that like started, you know, their whole civilization. And I feel like things were a lot like more cutthroat back then, I guess. Relations weren't nearly as good. You steal my yeah. dinosaur? Yes. Because, <laughs> like, they were always talking about in Darkstalker how, like, it was yeah. weird to see dragons from other tribes. You never saw hybrids. Why that was, like, so weird because it was, yeah. it was just, it was unheard of. And now you progress so much where you have hybrids, you have cities of dragons that are living. You know, I, I, they have all these things where it's, like, intertribal relationships are just get, getting so much better. And, and back then I feel like it was so bad. Those kind of, um, you know, animus gifts made more sense. But even, like, the Wall of Order, like, okay. I, I can, I can kind of see it, but what guy thought, let's pit the entire tribe against each other, and that will make us all a better tribe? Like, who thought that? I mean, it's sort of like military rank, I guess, but one thing that did, that's actually one of the things that turned me off to the Ice Wings, like, when I first read the books, I loved their design, I loved everything about them, but then when we read Winters and I found out how, like, harshly they rigid. treated each other and yeah. how rigid and stuck to the rules they were... That kind of made me reluctant to, like, have any characters that were an Ice Wing. Right, because and, like, it's just, there's no, while, there's no wiggle room. I didn't think too much about the wall in book 15, in book, at the beginning of book 14, but, like, when Snowfall was talking about it with Mink, and you could actually hear the dragons out loud thinking about, like, they were better than this person or this person when they're, like, all equals or whatever, yeah. that really sort of... Yeah, it just, it, like, right. in book 7 it didn't seem like such a weird thing. Like, sure, yeah, they have this ranking thing, but then, like, wh when you get to an actual... I, I, I say actual ice wing because winter wasn't an actual ice wing. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, he was a when, you, when you get to the point where it's like they really dive into the, the mechanics of this, you're like, wait a minute. This doesn't seem like a smart idea. No. And I like that Tui, like, whether or not, like, if it was a case where, like, she introduced it and, and then realized it was actually not a great idea, or whether it was a case of her just, like, 
or wait, she maybe was it wasn't this from book seven. right, right? But like, if it was a case of her realizing that that was a poor addition to Nightwing culture or Icewing, Icewing, Icewing culture, then that I means- I like that she was big enough to like admit that it was a poor addition and yeah. take it out. And you know, either way, it worked in Snowfall's favor because it was it was like a very good summarizing moment to cap off a powerful her way character to end arc. The story. And yeah, yeah, a good way to end the story, but also a good way to like summarize her character arc from going from hating the wall but submitting to having to do it every evening because well, this is the way every queen has done it. You know, going to you know what? I'm the queen. <laughs> I I can do whatever I want. Get rid of the wall. Speaking <laughs> of what, not just the wall, but also breaking the ice. Wall the that actual kept wall. Every, <laughs> yep, that kept every dragon out. That yeah. was also pretty cool. It's cool. It's funny because they have the symbolism in Darkstalker of like losing the bracelets that got people over the wall. Which, like, closed off the Ice Kingdom. That was, like, I guess symbolic for, like, how they became closed off. And then here they have the symbol for, like, undoing that. And, you know, taking yeah. a step in, you know, in a new direction. And now it was just, just so good. The Ice Kingdom if she wants to, because... <laughs> right? <laughs> her boyfriend or husband or whatever. I don't know if they're married yet or not, but her significant other can now come back <laughs> So, I mean, and, he'd probably get really cold. So yeah, right. <laughs> I, I was, it was kind of weird to me how the Pintalan dragons were like. How, I, I, I'm wondering. How were they alive? How did, Su- yeah. how did Tsunami not notice? Because, like, she said yeah. she thought they were coming down further south, but, like, I feel like you would have noticed at some point. Hey, it's like Clay- 100 degrees colder than it ought to be for the desert. I mean, like, even in, in like, book five, Clay even said that some of the mud, we- that the Ice Kingdom was super cold, and or, no, not Clay, one of the dragons said that the, that the mud, we- some of the mud wings might freeze to death before they got to the Ice Kingdom. Yeah, and that, they, and they were, like, a cold. southern part. The Patalan dragons Patalan were at the from- northern part. Yeah. And they, they were, were like, like, weak from flying for days. And they come from the Savannah, like, area. How are they? Uh, yeah, like, they were ill-prepared. And they're, like, and butterflies freeze real, like, when I they know, freeze, right? they go into hibernation. How did they not They all- go crack. Speaking of which, what did you not like about the book? Yeah, so, um, before this gets too long, I guess we better move along. Um, I can't think of a whole lot. I can I think do, of something. <laughs> I do first. feel like sometimes... I like Snowfall's inner dialogue. I think it was an interesting addition to the point of view. At first, during the book, not so much later when it started, when she was having more of her revelations and character progression, but for the first maybe third of the book, it got a little tedious, you know, for every page for her to go through the same shtick of thinking about what could possibly go wrong. Not, it wasn't bad enough where it, like, turned me off at all. I just happened to notice it. And because I can't think of anything else to knock... <laughs> That's what I'm gonna bring I can, up. And I'm about to bring it up right now. Okay. The people. I oh, did not yeah. like the people. Okay, so I so I mean humans are fine and all, but one of the so when I first found out about Wings of Fire, I originally wasn't going to read it because I thought, oh, it's more it's about like humans and their pet dragons. Yeah. Then I read the back, I realized, wait, no, this is the dragon's perspective. It's like warriors, I'm gonna read this, and I loved it. And then they introduced humans again. I like my books without humans. <laughs> because ironic. humans, ru- let's be honest, humans ruin everything. Have you taken a look at society today? <laughs> I'm just right? saying. We muddle everything up. <laughs> and I, I agree with you that one of the one of the most attractive tenets that made her series extremely unique, because very few series actually commit with to dragons. a completely human-free series. It yeah. made it very attractive. And, um, you know, and then they whatever right direction back. she wants to take it, is I, I feel like it'll be interesting. But, but like, I can live with the humans. One thing I didn't like, the thing I didn't like the most, though, is how quickly they realized the humans could, like... They yeah, were, like, that was they a were very about, quick... They were about to eat Rin, and then just, like, less than two pages later, they were like, oh no, all the humans can talk, what have we been doing? We need to set them all free. Like, that yeah. That happened way too fast. That I is, feel like mm. in the actual story timeline, like, of that happening, I feel like the timing was less off. But as for the physical book... Like, it was, like, a couple yeah. pages. Not, to, not just the physical book. I feel like it would have, like, even for you some think? of the queens, it might have... Oh, take, well, yeah, I can see that for like, some of the queens. I fe- like, I feel like it would have taken at least a day or two for them all to adjust to the idea yeah. and everything. Yeah. And then realize, oh, we need to do something about this. I can, because of, like, everything with, like, the ring of vision, I can kind of get, like, snowfall, like, coming around so quick. And maybe, yeah, like, snowfall. glory, maybe thorn. Thorn's I mean, pretty unorthodox. I mean, of course the rain wings, kid. They, <laughs> right. They're vegetarian. <laughs> I, I can see Thorn. Thorn's pretty unorthodox, you know, maybe. Yeah. I mean, she is also a criminal, so I don't know. But I don't know, like, Coral, maybe Ruby, Morhen. I mean, not, I, I just, I not mean, to knock them, but, like, and that's I don't a, mean just, like, 
not, I mean, it would probably take them a while to, I mean, it'd be like a dog suddenly started right? talking to us. It would take us a while to comprehend Like, at least it. more we than, like, half a day. We wouldn't understand it right dogs away. Dogs are a bad like example. That. We don't eat dogs. If chickens started okay. talking if to me. If chickens started. <laughs> it would oh, take no, me that, more. It, that if, one, if, Chick-fil-A <laughs> would go out of business If so a chicken bad. talked to me, it would take me longer than a day to stop eating chicken. <laughs> not to be a terrible person. Okay. It, would, it would take me longer than a day to accept the fact that a chicken was talking. I would probably go to capability. a doctor before I stopped eating chicken. I would go, I would check myself into a mental institution. <laughs> because I'm not that far off anyways. No, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will say that the epilogue was a little vague, which is probably intentional. I'm just being a little bit nitpicky. I kind of wish I knew what was going on with Vol. Because yeah. they made out like he had some, I don't know, weird, like either he was banished or exiled or was sick or something. And I'm pretending I, to know who Vol is because I did not read the the Dragon Slayer book because, again... Oh, no, he students. was in the epilogue of uh, this book in, 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 in Patala. He wasn't Except in Dragon Except I Slayer. vaguely, I, I blazed over the epilogue, honestly. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, it just, I, I just, it felt like a little bit sudden, like a yeah. big switch. I, I do feel like she has been integrating humans very quickly, like, we went from, like, book 13, and up until book 13, we'd had maybe one human interaction. And, and I would they say were that all, was, like, as pets, which I would, like... I, I mean, would say that was, like, Smolder were, with Sunny. There were always humans, but... There, but, but they weren't they weren't playing such a big role. And then, like... They were, and they were sort of, like, how we see dogs or cats or something. Yeah. And there are places in the world that you eat dogs, so I'm just... Oh, saying. okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> and I guess if you were really hungry, you could eat a dog. I mean, it's... Yeah, but, we're, but we love our pets, so we're not going to... Yeah, um... I just, but after, like, book 13, you know, with Dragon Slayer and then this, and not that it's necessarily a bad thing, just an observation, but she integrated humans very quickly. Yeah. And some people, I, you know, like you, I guess some people aren't going to find that as attractive. No. I don't necessarily dislike it. I'm, I mean, I'm at least up for, like, seeing where it goes, but I do, I did kind of get the feeling that, like, I don't know, it's, it, the humans are having a large part. I do Which still want to hear about the humans. I just kind of, I would like more stories like Dragon Slayer where the humans had their storyline, but it's not necessarily playing such a large part in the overall or main book series. into the main book yeah. series. I do kind of want to see Ren, like, mouth off more, though, because she mouths off a lot. And it's yeah, kinda, it's, but Tsunami it's, it's can do that, too. <laughs> I'm not letting this I down! Love, <laughs> I love when Tsunami was, like, coming to the Ice Kingdom and Snowfall <laughs> yeah. was like, oh, it's this dragon, no! No, and then Tsunami, like, took one look at her and was like, ugh! <laughs> Mutual dis... They just did not like each other. It was funny. Tsunami dislikes everybody, though. She's I mean, that's a fair. She's a fireball that blazes up and down and sideways and at everything that they yep. <laughs> which was most things. Yeah, so, okay, um... like... All right, going, going a little off topic here. I think an enemy or Auklet would even have to become queen of the sea wings because if Sanavi became queen, then like I, I mean, know, I feel like I feel like the responsibility yeah. would mellow her out. I don't know. I don't <laughs> think. <it would. laughs> Maybe not. You're right. I don't I know. Mean, Queen Glory put her in charge of half the ramblings, and that didn't mellow that, her. That that did happen. I had forgotten <laughs> about that little thing. If anything that made her more enraged. More like a military commander. Yep. Okay, so we've kind of gone over like what we like and what we dislike. Um, predictions. What do you think will happen in the next book? If anything. Uh, before we do predictions, I do want to say I like the concept of having the ten dragons, one from each tribe. It's yeah, like taking it's... the prophecy of five, but revamping it to include a dragon from each tribe, which I think is an yeah. interesting concept. Also, no, I... Plus, Keebly's yeah. back, so I'm happy. Yep. <laughs> of course you are. He's going to annoy the heck out of me. Freckle you. supremacy, man. Fre freckles between Lynx and Keebly. <laughs> the face you're making right now is like, ah. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, that's one of the few things in our friendship we, like, wholeheartedly disagree about. I'm not freckles? going to say... No. Keebly. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to say out loud that I hate Keebly, but I hate Keebly. I, <laughs> I'm going I, I to mean, admit I'm it. not going to judge you for it. But you I'm going to agree to disagree with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it's a fictional character. I, I feel like people get too worked up over it sometimes. Yeah. So, but... <laughs> now, full predictions. This is the final section. So, um, I heard an interesting theory. Uh, one popular theory going around is that the next point of view will be from Luna's, but my cousins also have an interesting theory I actually theory heard that, that confirmed. That Tua oh, confirmed that. She did? Yeah. Well, then that knocks the other <laughs> theory out of the I had... Well, okay. I haven't heard many theories just because, like, I finished the book this morning. Ah. So I have not... I've been avoiding spoilers, um... But I do feel like, um... Lena could use a book. Yeah, she's been kind of there. I feel like she's going to be a good final POV character. 
The other theory was Sky, which, I mean, I couldn't really see happening, but honestly, it's a, it would be a fun theory. Like It would be, I feel like it would be kind of hard, though, because he's, he's, yeah, he's too not happy. gonna, not gonna hate on Sky, but he's a little bit naive. He's too happy. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because one of the things I love is that this newest arc has seemed very, not dark, but I guess aged up a little bit for, like, because, yeah. you know, her readers have grown her with the series. Grown, We're a little grown. bit older now. We can handle a little bit of a more violent it's 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 Your not sp- not even <laughs> off, sorry. <laughs> that's okay it had already happened his name is gregory and he's my new fidget toy when he falls apart i'm gonna have to find a new one anyways um i th- i like how the new arc has been like it seems a little bit more war-torn and more like yeah. desperate than the last couple not that the, the second arc was like not high stakes but it just is his it's been very intense and it keeps me hooked um but I feel like Sky would not be a great anti- or a, a great protagonist for that. Setting. And then there was another one. It wasn't Lynx. I don't remember who it was though. Lynx but. could use a book. That, oh, the but, other theory was Ren, but I would hate mm. it if they used Ren because Dad that would, would totally you. throw it off. Dragon supremacy. <laughs> yeah, that would that would I, I I honestly if she used like a scavenger as a as a main that yeah, would that, throw me off pretty bad. Yeah. I'm also not looking forward to seeing Ren in the next book. I'm sorry, Ren, but <laughs> mm, you're not. I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. If yes. you don't want to see her, that's fine. But I, I mean, don't know. Like, she's I'm, I'm, be there. I'm, I'm gonna have to deal with it. I'm neutral on her so far. I haven't yeah. decided yay or nay on having scavengers in the books. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited for Sky though, and I'm excited for more links. I'm excited to see how they're gonna um, take care of the whole mind-controlled friends and family thing. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of using Rainwing blow darts. I think that was cool. I feel like what it doesn't really solve the poison thing though. They're gonna have to figure out how to get yeah. the stuff out of their heads or whatever. Yeah, I feel like um, maybe they could do something like that with leaf speak. Maybe because like maybe I don't know. Maybe there's a plant that well, is like, immune to it. Or maybe just like because it is a plant, like leaf speak lets you grow plants. Yeah. So couldn't you ungrow them? Well, I don't know. You know, Sundu did have a really hard time fighting against the. That's true. Plant but then, like, her... it's kind of it's vague on like how the plant sin- works. Like, another thing that it's I a find... sentient plant. Enough said. <laughs> Audrey too. Right. <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> how do you like? How do you? How do you theorize about a plant? Because I don't know the tenets of how it works. So. Another thing I find really weird is we the plant was there when um, Clear Sight went to the island. She like men, she mentioned hearing about like yeah mind control animals and stuff. But the dragons there were fine; they weren't taken over. Yeah, and they act and they somehow managed to push the plant back until yeah the, until Queen Wasp injected her brain with it or something. But there's got to be some way to beat. It. I mean, I mean, with every because natural like, situation, ladies, there's a natural yeah. in within nature. Let me get philosophical for a minute. There is a natural set of checks and balances everything is going to have something that balances it out whether or not you can figure out what it is is a different story but it should be there right it should be there though yeah what if it's like dragon bite viper venom or something Hmm. you have to inhale the fumes (laughs) don't get touched by it though who wants to milk the giant snake (laughs) let's volunteer keebly he's expendable Huh, I don't so, have a lot of predictions in general. I'm not super great at predictions. A lot of people have been asking me, like, what what are my predictions for I'm pretty bad 15, at them, too, honestly. I just, I guess besides I just, Luna, I'm better at just noticing Luna things. One, that's not yeah. really... I mean, I had kind of figured, I had I had thought about Luna being the main character, and then when it got confirmed, I was like, ha, called it. I'm but kind like, of thinking that they might not actually stop the army. Like, I don't think they're going to stop the army before the dragons cross over to hmm. Pyria. There's that would be gonna interesting. Be, there's probably going to be some kind of fight, because I'd be a little surprised if the ten of them could figure out how to cure a yeah. whole army before they went and invaded What the would place. be really cool is if the ten of them got over there, failed, and then they got chased back or something. And then or the army came back and they chased the army back. Either way, I think the army's going to get over there. Yeah, I feel like that would... I feel like anything less than that would be a little bit anticlimactic, almost. Yeah. I mean, it, it's gonna be if this is gonna age horribly if the book fifteen comes out and she pulls it off beautifully without bringing them over. But at the moment, anyways, like I can kind of envision it being like a better climax. You know, this video will probably be relevant by the time it comes out, anyway. <laughs> right. Just, just saying. The theory videos do not age well in general. Yeah. I mean, some do, but they... Sometimes, like, sometimes but, you get lucky. But when they do, they have spoilers, so. if, if If a theory video ages well, the spoiler police hunt down the creator. <laughs> 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 so just gonna throw that out there. 
This has been a warning to all you who are thinking about right? starting a spoiler channel. <laughs> if we disappear. <laughs> well, I mean, if we don't have any other predictions, I guess we could kind of work toward wrapping it up because we we did hit 40 minutes. I think that's it. Actually, Time flew by. I've got a headache now. I yelled too much. <laughs> we did not spend 41 minutes rambling, though. I feel like it was a productive 41 minutes. And they, so people are here listening to us say what we liked and disliked about a book. Deb- debatably, I mean, that's, that's, in, that's interesting to me. I mean, sometimes yeah. I feel like I feel like drawing connections can be kind of interesting. Yeah. I like to, I listen to stuff like this while I draw. Sometimes when I get tired of music, if I can't find music that feels good at the moment, I'll listen to stuff like that. And then you got Marvel. me stuck on those stupid comedy videos, <laughs> and now I'm listening to those stupid comedy sketches nonstop. Yeah. You ruined me. I listen to Marvel. <laughs> I have listened to some Marvel movies. I go back and listen. I, I, Guardians of the Galaxy is one I like to listen to a lot, just because yeah. I, I love my space idiots. I keep listening to Iron Man. Not uh-huh. gonna lie, it's got some dope one-liners. <laughs> Talk about uh, off-topic, <laughs> but anyways, um, I guess we can, you know, wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much for coming and uh, collaborating with me. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. It was fun. Uh, it worked out well. Maybe do it again in the future sometime. We hope. <laughs> Y'all, uh, be sure to go over, check out her channel, and, you know, you know, everything that she draws and animates, she does some great animation. Uh, she animated a screaming cat on her channel that looks really good. <laughs> I don't know why, I've watched it, like, 30 times. It looks, it looks really good. It, it just, it looks nice. Um, thank y'all for watching. If you haven't read book 14 and you watched the video, you're a naughty child, go read book 14. It's really good. <laughs> it's worth um, it! It, it was a good book. Overall, I'd say, who, like... This is for someone who likes books but doesn't really like to spend the time mm. reading, so it's worth it. I would say, like, eight, eight and a half out of ten. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that... I mean, I'd probably give it more of an eight just because I felt like there were some, some things that could have done better. And again, no mm-hmm. humans. <laughs> like, that just kind Which of... Which is fair. I mean... soured the whole book for me, honestly. But, I mean, some of you might like it. It, yeah, it's, it's you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. It doesn't matter if you don't like the humans. Yeah. I mean, it does. It matters. <laughs> it matters I don't, to you. I don't want to invalidate your opinion. Let me rephrase that. It doesn't it doesn't mean that you cannot not like the humans. Did I, re- did I phrase that right? Did no. I make a double <laughs> negative? I didn't. Whatever. <laughs> my point should come across anyhow. I better end this before I ruin my reputation. Right. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to both of us. Do all that good stuff. Check out uh, DeviantArt Redbubble. I will link her scratch and red bubble in the description uh be sure to buy merch from her she has some cool stuff i have nothing <laughs> and <laughs> there won't be anything until july i'm not doing Wait, any you work. had stuff in your shop didn't you? i did and i deleted it because i had the wrong username and i hated it it was hard oh. to find and all the art was like two years old anyway okay never mind don't go check out her red bubble i guess apparently there's nothing there anymore <laughs> <laughs> all right anyways y'all have a great week and i'll see you next sunday with something else Bye-bye. hopefully a good video <laughs> inside lane Missing exits, include to the pavement Between the lines, I keep my gate straight ahead As the last stop flies by No more waiting for the gun to fire No more walking through revolving doors I've gone around once, and I don't need to go around anymore Break away, get your sober case Stop dwelling on